Good morning students and today your English teacher welcomes you in the class of English. Children, today I am going to discuss with you something very different. Just tell me, out of the whole of your class, how many are there? Who like adventure, trekking, snow-capped mountains, hills, solitude, happiness, serenity? I think that there's a deep hidden desire to travel around the world. Because that gives you the lifetime happiness. Yeah, it's there if you are there or near the seashore. But the state of sublime, the perfect sublimity is reached when you are in the laps of Himalayas. Not only Himalayas, there may be Alps, Andes, Kilimanjaro, any mountain range or mountain peak. But since ages, mountains have attracted the sages, devotees, worshippers, travelers, trackers, adventurers. Children, the mountains allure everyone. Because we are busy in our life and the traumatic conditions which we pass through day by day make a light dull and a positive energy what is inside us gets down, totally suppressed. But when you are in the laps of the mountains, there is resuscitation, revoking of the energy and you get a lifetime achievement. Children, our today's topic also relates to the adventure. Today we are going to study the chapter Silk Road by the author Nick Middleton. Children, in this chapter we will discuss about Silk Road or Silk Road. If you Google children, and uh, if you search the history books, you will find the description about the Silk Road. It is the ancient uh, trade route which existed since ages between China and then India and Sri Lanka, Indonesia, Maldives, Pakistan, Afghanistan, and these many places. It connected all these places. It's the most ancient route. And people from one side of the mountain used to travel through snow-capped peak, mountain passes, gorges, and various the things and reach to the site for trade. Children, this uh, road is also important because it connects to uh, very religious place that is Kalas Mansrovar, where there is a sacred Mount Kalas next to it, Mansrovar Lake is there. It is not only holy for Buddhist but for Hindus also around the world because Hindus consider it as an abode of Lord Shiva and 
Buddhists consider it as a heavenly place of Lord Buddha. Whatever, this place has a religious sanctity. The children, let's first uh, come to know about uh, Nick Middleton. Nick Middleton is a award-winning geographer. He has been awarded with the Royal Geographical Society's Ness Award for his works. He is a TV presenter and environmental scientist source. And he has given various lectures in the university. He was born in 1960 in London, UK. If you talk about his books, they are going to extremes, global casino, rivers, a very short introduction. So Nick Middleton being an adventurer and as an environmentalist had a deep desire to explore the beauties and deities Deities means the holy gods of Himalayas. So to accomplish that, he decided to be there in the laps of mountains. And uh, you know, I'm not neglecting the Andes and Alps, European and American mountain ranges, but Himalayas since ancient times have attracted sages and the people, those who want to attain contentment, happiness, those who want to be near the God or Indian mythology is filled with the description of Himalayas as well as our religious books. Children, if we talk about the Silk Road, it discusses about the courage, extreme danger which a person faces in Himalayas. Children, standing here and talking about Himalayas is, is uh, pretty easy. Similar to the discussion when we talk about the soldiers dying in the borders, Siachen Glacier, Pakistan border, Chinese border. It's very easy to talk about them, but be there and face the real bullet. It's a different thing. Similarly, talking here and remaining there and facing the natural dangers is totally different. Nature challenges you and the, it offers you hardships. And children, one who faces the challenges bravely, courageously, you know, gets a lifetime courage for whole life. Because once you overcome that challenge of nature, you get ultimate courage inside you to face any kind of danger in your forthcoming life. So author is an adventurer and uh, also an academician. As I told you, he is a PhD lecturer also. So he had a desire to study and exactly to research on the effect of altitude on human body and uh, his research proved that he realized actually that the attitude sickness causes the swelling of lungs and brain because it gets occupied with water and then it's very difficult to survive the you know limbs get numb when you are below a certain degree of temperature 
You don't feel that your limbs are there, fingers, toes. You don't feel that they are there. And the author has no religious inclination, yet starts to speculate on Tibetan Buddhism. So earlier, the author was there in Himalayas, just for research. But later on, he developed an inclination towards Buddhism. You know, he was there in uh, Himalayas to do the Koda. K O R A. Koda means Parikrama or one circle round the Mount Kailas. It is considered holy and spiritual, not only in Hinduism as well as Buddhism. Even Buddhists, they do the Kora. So he was there to do Kora. The children, uh, the author started his journey and there a local resident, a local lady named uh, named Lamu offered Nick Middleton a coat, a warm coat to make him warm during the journey. Children, if we talk about the main characters of this story, so they are Nick Middleton, the author himself, uh, Daniel, his friend, and the driver named Seaton. So, the Driver Seaton, along with Daniel and Nick Middleton, started their journey. And Nick Middleton was offered an overcoat by the local resident lady, and uh, just as a gift. So they started their journey and started gaining height. You know, when they passed through the nomadic tents. First, let me tell you about the word nomad. You know, you might have studied about it in history books. What is a nomad? Uh, before that, let me give you an example. You might have heard about the Bakarwals of Himachal Pradesh. It's a separate tribe, children, and uh, they have a particular habit. During summers, they climb up in the mountains and establish their tents there, live there. During winter, they come down and again establish their tents in the villages just to escape from the cold, severe, that is. Children, uh, this tribe, Bakarwal, is a shepherd tribe. They don't have permanent houses. As we do have. So uh, that tribe is considered as nomadic tribe or they are considered as nomads. So a uh, similar kind of tribe was there when they reached a flat surface in the Himalayas and you know they were welcomed by Tibetan dogs and uh, they are known as Tibetan Mastiffs. You know, Tibetan Mastiff is a very tall, sturdy dog, and uh, it is a, uh, it is covered with hair, it's totally covered with hair to escape from cold, and uh, you know its look, its uh, physical structure will give you a sh shiver. It's so sturdy. The children, uh, when they reached the nomadic tents, Tibetan Mastiff started shouting on them and uh, the driver Seaton had to accelerate the jeep to escape from them. Children, the mountainous dogs, they do have a habit uh, that they 
follow every vehicle. Reason behind it could be what I may guess that uh, the every animal has a particular area, and they don't want any intruder in that area. So till the time that intruder is out of their area, they just change that intruder. The same was being done by the Tibetan masters and then author left that place. Again reaching height, uh, there is the place where their jeep got stuck in the ice. It was very slippery and it, the jeep was receding back and uh, the place was like this. Jeep was climbing high and due to the ice it was slipping back and the other side was a ridge and any time the jeep could go in the ridge along with the travelers anyhow the Daniel and Nick Middleton got down Seaton handled the steering they put some stones on the rear tire and the front tires and they climbed they, their place and then moved to their place then they reached Darchen. So the author reached Darchen, and then when he reached that Darchen, there was a stay, and the whole night, author was unable to sleep because he got his sinuses blocked. Means he suffered from. Altitude, sickness. He suffered from altitude sickness. And the uh, author was not able to sleep because as he used to lie down, nose blocked and then he was not able to respire. Anyhow, he passed that night. Next uh, day he was taken to Tibetan Medical College and there he got some Ayurvedic medicines and uh, he felt a little bit relieved that night, but still there's probably about 80% still there. Anyhow, second night also passed in Darchin and then again they started their journey. At some point in the journey, Daniel left Nick Middleton because he had to move to some other place. And Seaton also left Nick Middleton because that was the end point for the vehicles. After that, there was uh, no route for the vehicles, and uh, Nick had to finish his next journey on foot only. So they stopped near a shop. It was a very old kind of broken roofed shop, and then uh, Nick will stop there for tea, coffee, and. Uh, some kind of breakfast and then uh, you know what happened in the shop the author met another man named In the shop, tea shop, the author met another named man named Norbu. Alright, so Norbu was another man, and he, you know, later on proved to be a co traveler with Nick Middleton. Because during their conversation, Nick Middleton found out that Norbu also wants to co run. And uh, he was from the Scientific Society of China. And like uh, Nick Middleton, Norbu had no, you know, religious belief, but he was doing that Kora because he wanted to do some study. Children, it's very difficult to travel alone in Himalayas. And especially at heights because you never know that next step 
what kind of danger is waiting for you. So if you have a co-traveler and uh, more clearly if you have a team five of five to six or six to seven or seven to eight co-traveler then it's very easy because then the danger gets distributed. Anyhow, uh, Norbu was accompanying Nick Middleton in the Cora and then Nick and uh, Norbu started their journey and they reached Mount Kalahas and I cannot explain children. I will be able to explain when I read the text of the book in the next video, upcoming video of this chapter where I will give the detailed explanation that what was a feeling inside Nick Middleton when he reached Mount Kalahas. He was totally speechless. You can understand what is being speechless. Because it's a divine and sacred place. You know, the waves and the air which travels there comes from the heaven. So you have a heavenly feeling there. Children, it gave a different experience to Nick Middleton. And he had described in detail in the text. Children, I think you have got an idea about the chapter, what the chapter is all about, and I hope my videos of this chapter will inspire you that in coming future when you have ample amount of time and resources you would definitely do some adventurous task and one such task would be in the laps of the mountains called Himalayas because children it will give you a lifetime experience lifetime courage every single step we move in the mountains make us more courageous. Alright children, that's all in this video. Hope you enjoyed it. So, detailed explanation will come in the next video. Till then, thank you and goodbye.